Every state and every country and every city has different regulations, but the concepts are what types of license and certificates that you would need. It might be named a little bit differently depending on where you are. So definitely best way to do this and approach this is to call your business license uh, city hall within your city, okay? Why is this super important? Because you must adhere to your city regulations. You don't wanna get sued and you wanna make this a legitimate business. Full disclaimer, once again, is to check with your city regulations to see what exact legal requirements are needed from you. I'm just here to show you the typical stuff that are needed that I'm seeing around the world. Now, there are five different requirements for you to run a food business. First up is the business type. What structure do you need? Sole proprietorship means that it's basically you yourself owning the business. Partnership, that means that you and your friend is owning a business. And incorporation, that's, that just means a legal structure that is set apart from you, your partners, or whatsoever that founded the business. So don't need to pay too much attention to it. This is just a very, very high level way of showing you what is needed and what is it to consider, okay? Next up, business license. Where will you operate your business? Is it gonna be a home business? You're required to have a business license. If you have a ghost kitchen or virtual kitchen, commissary kitchen whatsoever, you are required to have a business license. Same thing with a restaurant. You are required to have any types of license for you to operate any types of businesses, okay? Insurance, what types of insurance do you need? If you're running your home office, you would also actually call your home insurance guy and just tell them to add a home office insurance to tag it onto your existing insurance. And that would lower the cost for you on that one. Ghost Kitchen, you can actually use the Ghost Kitchen insurances. Each of the different kitchens have different regulations, once again, and different types of support. So best way is to ask the different kitchens that you are signing up with. And lastly, restaurant. You need to create a new insurance. And especially because when you're running a restaurant, your chances of getting sued skyrockets compared to the other types of structure. Fourth thing is the business name registration. To, that this allows you to trademark your name within your city, your state, and your province. With a home office, you're required to have that. Same thing with ghost kitchen, same thing with restaurant. Now you might be asking, well, why do I even care about trademarking my name. Because for example, if you created a brand such as McDonald's, do you know how much the name McDonald's is worth? It is worth billions of dollars. So that's the reason why you wanna trademark and protect your own brand name. Because you spent all the time, all the years in creating something that is credible, that is of quality. And all of a sudden, if you don't trademark this, if you don't register the name, then it's very easy for other people to steal that name and use that name and to tarnish your reputation. And that's the reason why you definitely need a business name registration. Next up is a food safety and a sanitation plan. It is basically how do you plan on keeping a food protocol when you're preparing your food items. In a home office, ghost kitchen, restaurant kitchen, you always need a food safety plan, a sanitation plan that you submit to your health officials for them to approve. At your home office, you can create your own manual and a city inspection is needed. Same thing with a ghost kitchen. However, with a ghost kitchen, oftentimes they have their own insurance, they have their own sanitation plan that you can use as well. Now. With the restaurant, you need to create your own manual as well and city inspection is needed as well. So nonetheless, it seems like that all the different types of restaurants, you need a sanitation plan and that is right. For everything that you do, you need to have the proper licenses, okay? We're talking about license, insurance, name registration, food safety plan. I highly, highly recommend you to make sure that you create all these things, set up the foundation right and to continue on with your business. Now that you understand that, go visit your state or your city website to identify what is required for you to operate, okay? Now, a huge pro tip for you guys, okay? Don't make excuses. Just because I'm telling you to make sure you sign up with your health official and whatnot, that's my obligation to tell you to do so. Just because you don't have your legalities in check, it shouldn't stop you from building your business and to building your dreams, okay? I'm not telling you to stop doing anything. I'm just sharing with you what I am obligated to share with you, which is for you to go and get your licenses, right? But I also see a lot of people operating the businesses without their license. So definitely the choice is up to you. 
if it was me, I would definitely go and go the proper way because who knows, one day you're going to be the mix McDonald's. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next lesson.